Well, hello, everyone. It's Pastor Mark, and you're joining me on Thursday, September 10th, 2020, as we finish up the book of Titus, Paul's letter to his protege, Titus. And we'll be in Titus chapter 3 today. Let's pray. We are here, Lord, at the foot of your throne, bowing down, looking up at you. Let us see into your eyes today. May we get a glimpse, a full belly even, of your truth today. And may we be motivated by the Spirit to apply these truths to our lives, that we might become more like Christ, our Savior, that we might be better teachers and servants and lovers of those in this world. Guide us this day. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. A very challenging chapter uh, this morning. I say challenging, not in that it's difficult to understand, but that it challenges us to live lives of integrity, lives of grace, and lives of love. Let's read this chapter. Titus chapter 3. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and always to be gentle toward everyone. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. As soon as I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, Do your best to come to me in Nicopolis, because I have decided to winter there. Do everything you can to help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way, and see that they have everything they need. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Everyone with me sends you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Folks, this chapter speaks, I think, directly to what we see going on in our nation today. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient and be ready to do whatever is good. Paul talks about doing good in this no less than three times. He tells Titus to do what is good and to teach the people to do what is good. Folks, when I look along across the, the landscape of America today, and I don't care your political affiliation, that doesn't concern me. It doesn't matter. People of all political ilk, people of all social um, concern, so many are on social media today. They're on the media. They're uh, on the news. They're in the world, and they're being hateful. They're speaking out and hate and bitterness. They disguise it as concerns for justice and concerns for doing what is good, but at the end of the day, they're not doing what is good. And I'm not going to name specific organizations. You can name those for yourself. I have some in mind, but they're not doing what is good. Ultimately, what they're doing is feeding into bitterness. They're feeding into pride. They're feeding into greed and selfishness. Most importantly, they're feeding into hatred. 
And Paul, I think, would say if he were here today looking at what's going on in our country in America, he would say, if you're a Christian and you're a part of some of these organizations and out here rioting and, and, and spewing at forth hate-filled speech, he would say, you're not doing what is good. You're doing what is antithetical to God. And when you lash out at police officers and harm police officers, harm authority figures, speak out with hateful speech towards political figures, no matter what their political views are, you're not doing the work of God. It doesn't mean we, don't, we can't go up against people who uh, oppose us and maybe are doing things that uh, uh, themselves that oppose God. We can go up against them, but when our speech and our actions are laced with hatred, when we're speaking out with bitter words, when we're condemning people and not giving them a chance to repent, when we're not lacing what we say with love and grace and mercy, then we are not doing the work of God. I don't care if you say you're doing the work of God. If, if your actions don't demonstrate the love and grace and mercy of God, then you're not doing the work of God. And Paul would say that because he says at one time, or because he says, you don't slander, slander no one. Be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. This is how Christians act. But he admits that at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. And he said, we did this. We did it the wrong way once. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. We did this, he said. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, when we saw how Jesus acted, he saved us, Paul says. He saved us. He saved us out of all of that, not because of anything righteous that we did, Paul says, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life and that we might do life and faith like he did. Isn't that amazing? In other words, Jesus showed us grace and mercy. We need to show grace and mercy to others. That doesn't mean, Pastor Mark is not saying we don't stand up against evil. He's not saying <laughs> that we don't stand up against ungodly actions. But what he's saying is that when we do, we do it with grace and mercy as our foundation, not hatred. We do it with gentleness and resolve and resiliency, but we do it with kindness and love. One of the people that I see in U.S. history, US history that did it this way and did it effectively was Martin Luther King Jr. Here was a man who literally changed the landscape of America. And you could argue the world when it came to issues of civil rights, the rights of people whom who, who had been oppressed for, for centuries. But he stood up against evil. He stood up against injustice, but he did it with peace and love, nonviolence. And he changed the world. He showed Christian action and Christian foundations, foundations of love, grace, and mercy. And he changed the world. Don't tell me. I don't care what, you're, and again, I don't care political affiliations. I don't care. Don't tell me that peace and love can't work because we've seen it in our own nation and we can see it again. Paul says in verse 14, our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good. Folks, we need to learn that. As God's people today, we need to learn and devote ourselves to doing what is good. We can be the salt and the light of this world, but we got to do it differently. Our world is filled with hate right now. We need to bring the love. Are you bringing the love? Are you getting on social media and being hateful? Are you saying nasty things about politicians, groups of people, 
that you disagree with in our world? Are you lashing out at people at work, your family network, because you don't agree with them? If you are, folks, check that and ask yourself, am I doing what is good? Am I doing what is loving and grace-filled and merciful? If you can honestly ask yourself that question, and if you honestly answer the question, no, then you need to make some changes. Because God's call on our life is to do what is good. Let's pray. Father, as we move out of Titus, may we be convicted of this last chap- in this last chapter to do what is good, to be the people you've called us to be, to not just fall in step with the hatred of this world, but to fall out of step with it and to bring the love, the love of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to do a one-chapter book tomorrow, and that is the New Testament book of Philemon. I'll see you then.